Hello and welcome to my Let's Play 2015 Thomcraft series. So I'm calling this my 2015 Thomcraft series, but I don't intend to exclusively focus on just Thomcraft. Um, I did a tutorial series on Thomcraft 4.1 last year, and a lot of people felt that it wasn't really an authentic playthrough. And I really can't argue with that, because in truth, it was not an authentic playthrough. I wasn't really trying to play the game. I was simply trying to, you know, show people some various things you can do with Thomcraft. And that was kind of the whole goal that I was trying to reach, was showing people what can you do with Thomcraft? What can you, you know... How do you start out? How do you progress? Things like that. And a lot of people felt that maybe I should have been... Um, you know, it wasn't an organic thing. It wasn't something that you could simply follow through in a real game. And while I don't feel that criticism was fair, um, I can certainly understand it because it wasn't a... Let's Play, so it wasn't as though, you know, maybe I wasn't following a good linear progression, which you might do if you were actually playing the game. So, I'm trying to make this more of a Let's Play series, and hopefully it will be more authentic, because it will be authentic. I'm actually going to play through this game, you know, in this seed, in this world, and it's not just that I'm creating things in here to show you things. It's going to be how I actually try to play. And it's going to be a Let's Play. It's going to be a tutorial. But um, it's going to focus on Thomcraft. It's going to be my primary mod that I want to focus on. Now, that's not to say I won't look into other mods. I never play exclusively Thomcraft. In fact, up until recently, I didn't even like Thomcraft. I thought it was very confusing, but in trying to learn how to play and share things that I've learned, I have come to really appreciate how nice Thomcraft is. It's an incredibly well-balanced mod, and I like it quite a bit. So, um, I'm definitely going to focus heavily on Thomcraft and what I'm trying to do. But, um, you know, when you first start out, you really can't start out just doing Thomcraft. There are some resources that you need, you know, iron, glass, gold, just to start up with Thomcraft. And obviously in a just started out game, uh, I'm not going to have those things. So it's going to be, you know, some time before we can go into Thomcraft. But, um, that's definitely going to be the primary focus of this series, which is why I'm calling it my Thomcraft 2015 Let's Play, even though we won't focus exclusively on Thomcraft. So, this is the Direwolf 20-pack from Feed the Beast. I'm on the newly released 1.3.0 version of the pack, which just came out yesterday. Um, in fact... Uh, I had some trouble upgrading from 121 to 130. I needed to delete my world to really get things to work out for me. Or sorry, I didn't remember. I mean, all my um, feed the beast data, which is what I've tried to do. So, um, anyway, this is the very beginning. You know, you saw me cut down the tree and make some tools. And uh, I did make a complete set of wooden tools. And the reason I do that, even though you don't really need wood for very long, is that um, once we get to Thomcraft, we are going to need to have everything in the game possible so that we can scan those items and make use of them. So Thomcraft requires you to do scanning to figure out what makes up what item. And that's going to be something we have to do. So I always make as many items as possible, even if I won't need them for very long, because I will need them in some capacity, even if it's just for Thomcraft. So 
All right, so it's early game. This is the Let's Play, so, you know, I'm going to do some of the basic Let's Play things. I promise I won't do too much mining on camera. Uh, I find that very boring and tedious, and there's a lot of stuff I can do off camera to speed up how things are going. I haven't disabled any mods from the Direwolf pack. Typically, I do, because I'm not a big fan of Biomes of Plenty. Um, some of the mods, I feel, add too much world gen. Like, uh, I don't like Batania. There's too much world gen stuff in there. But uh, I thought people might want to follow along with this and see how it's going. So I wanted to do a straight Direwolf 20, you know pack just to make sure people can follow along with everything. Alright, so the Direwolf pack includes a journey map, and journey map is pretty nice. You press J to get a journey map, and you can get waypoints. I made a waypoint for the spawn already. I'm going to make a new one here for animals, because I'm seeing there's pretty much every kind of animal right here. Sheep, cows, chicken. I think those are, I think these are pigs over here. Those might be squid. I can't tell if that's a spider or if that's some some kind of mob from like Ender Zoo maybe, but uh, whatever. Journey map is pretty cool. I changed some of the mini map settings. I made it a square map, added frames per second, and um, so I may change some things like that. Oh, here's a cave. I can get me some stone. You know, it's it's early game, so I definitely need a few things to get started, but I promise not to do. I promise to do as little mining on camera as possible. I'll show you a few things, but uh, I won't do everything, definitely. So, all right. Um, yeah, you don't need uh, wood for very long at all. I'm going to get stone tools right away. But uh, like I said, uh, I will be scanning things in Thomcraft very soon. So. Uh, I, I go ahead and make the tools, even though perhaps I don't really need them immediately. So, yeah, whatever, just some stuff to carry around. I'll put it in the chest as soon as I, you know, get somewhere I decide I want to make a chest. All right, let's see here, make a stone sword. I get very distracted sometimes. I didn't make a wooden sword, actually. Huh. Better make one of those. I need to scan it. And finally, a stone axe. All right, there we go. There's... Oh, I did make a stone sword. All right, I am easily distracted sometimes. So, um, I'm just going to go look around, see what's around here. Um, if there's some coal right here, I might dig it up. If not, I'm going to leave this cave. I don't want to fight things. When I don't have any armor on, I don't like early fights when I don't have any resources, um, which is why the first thing I typically do is make a bed if I can find sheep. And I see a village in the distance, so that looks awesome. So probably going to go over there and see if they've got food, get me some early game food that'll help out and see what resource the village has to exploit. And um, then I think we will get started with Tinker's Construct. So, yeah, there's a lot of things in Bombs Plant I don't like, like this quicksand. I really don't like the quicksand. There's a lot of things that will hurt you in Bombs of Plenty, thorns, and quicksand. And, you know, I guess it adds some variety to the game. I don't particularly like some of the negative aspects, but I wanted people to be able to follow along easily, so I wanted to do the you know, the Direwolf mod pack experience, all of that, so that's what I wanted to focus on. So, I am. If you want to follow along in my play, um, the seed I used is Beta, B-E-T-A, as in the second letter of the Greek alphabet. So, if you want to follow along, you can use the Beta seed to do that. And I pretty much headed, let's see here, southeast to find this village. Um, I look for a plains or a desert so I can find a village, and this looks like a pretty nice village, so uh, it's pretty big anyway, so I want to see what's around here, and um, I'll be back, and we'll start some Tinker's Construct stuff. Back in a flash. 
Okay, so like I said, my favorite early game mod is Tinker's Construct. And that's what I want to get started with in the very beginning. So I went exploring the village. There is tons of food here. I found some armor in the uh, blacksmith's hut. I found a Thaumonomicon. Uh, some thomium, a couple other useful things. I didn't find a tinker's hut or a forestry hut or, uh, you know, too many useful treasures in town other than this, you know, iron chest plate. So a little bit of early game armor is kind of nice and uh, there's tons of food and houses and villagers and so I spent some time uh, making the village more safe for the villagers, you know, covering up mine factory loaded sludge pits and breaking cactuses, things like that, gathering up some materials we would need to do some Tinker's Construct material. So that's what I want to work on, you know, right now. So getting some materials when we can start that, and um, let's go ahead and start Tinker's Construct. So I didn't find a Tinker's Hut in this village, so we're going to need to start Tinker's Construct basically from scratch, but it's pretty simple. You spawn into the world with this Materials and You Volume 1 book. So if we open that book, it tells us what you can make. Um, we need blank patterns, we need to make a stencil table, a part crafter, a pattern chest, and a tool station. Those are the four basic tools for Tinker's Construct. So let's go over here and make some blank patterns. Let's see here. All right, here we go. And I think I'll start with 12 of those. Now, we need a stencil table. That's what's going to let us make the patterns, change the blank patterns into, you know, usable patterns. And it looks like the first time you make one of these tinkers, ta uh, you know, tinkers tables, I guess, um, it's going to give you more books. The second edition of Materials in You and this Tinker's Weaponry book, which uh, I don't know if that's new. I've never seen that before. But uh, we don't need those things just yet. I'll, I'll keep them in my inventory, but I don't need them just yet, I don't think. All right, so we also need a pattern chest which requires a chest and a blank pattern so let's get a chest and then a blank pattern and there we go a pattern chest we need a tool station and a part crafter so or sorry the part builder and that's a piece of wood and a blank pattern And finally, we need a tool station. That's what it's called. I can't remember what it was called. And that requires a crafting station. Will it take a vanilla crafting table? I bet it will. Yes, it will. Okay. So you can actually put a vanilla crafting table into a crafting pattern anywhere and get a crafting station from Tinker's Construct. I like the crafting station better because A, it's cheap, and B, if you leave stuff, it stays in there until you come back. It doesn't just fall on the floor like it does in vanilla. So that's a nice, easy way to get that done. So... By the way, if I didn't mention it, I took one of the houses I found in town and marked it on my map and... Uh, this is my home, at least for the time being. So, all right. Part builder. Inventory tweaks has some issues sometimes. Pattern chest. Tool station. And part builder. All right, so we're going to go to the stencil table. We're going to put our blank patterns in there. And the way to use Tinker's Construct, or the basics of it, is we're going to craft tools. We're going to craft them from individual tool components. And if you go look in your Materials and You Volume 2 book, it will tell you about the different kind of tools you can make. And we're going to make the four basic tools for Minecraft. The axe, the shovel, the pickaxe, and the sword. And so let's start by making enough stuff to get those things. So 
If we look in our materials and you book, we're going to find out that pickaxes are composed of pickaxe heads, tool rods, and tool bindings. Shovels need shovel heads and tool rods. Hatchets need hatchet heads and tool rods. And broadsword, which is what they call the sword because there are different kinds of weapons in Tinker's Construct, although I have only ever used the broadsword. That's really what I feel is most effective. There are a couple other useful things, but um, I haven't felt them to be useful enough to ever craft, really. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but whatever. So the broadsword requires a sword blade, a tool rod, and a wide guard. Now there's also a mattock, and a mattock is a farming tool. It's a combination of an axe and a hoe, and it works really well. But um, uh, this village has tons of food. I mean tons. So I don't need a garden right now. I don't plan to build a house just yet. I'm going to go mining first. So I'm going to focus on these four basic tools. So let's go ahead and craft the stencils we need to build these tools. So if we go to the table and put our blank patterns over here, we can click on the pattern we want. So this is a tool rod, and you can tell it's a tool rod because it says over here in the tool tip. We need a tool rod. We need a tool binding. We need a pickaxe head. We need a shovel head. We need a hatchet head. And we need a sword blade pattern and a wide guard. All right, there we go. So here are the various patterns we are going to use, and we'll just put those into our pattern chest. If you have the pattern chest next to the part builder, you can access anything from the part builder. So that's why you build the pattern chest, basically. And you can't put anything else besides patterns into the pattern chest. So it's kind of a specific inventory for Tinker's Construct part building, which is pretty good in my opinion. All right, so let's build our tools. It's early game, so we're going to be going with stone in the beginning. Um, we're going to, I've got some cobblestone here. I'm going to make, uh, let's see here, going to make an axe and a shovel. Going to make a pickaxe. And we also want a sword, but I'm not sure that I want a stone sword. We'll come back to that in a minute. I also need a tool rod. We need a tool rod for pretty much all of these things. So we're going to need four of those. One, two, three, four sticks will get me four tool rods. And I also need a tool binding pattern. And I'll go ahead and make that out of wood as well because sticks are pretty cheap. Let's see if I have any flint. If I had some flint, that's what I would make my sword out of right now. Looks like I don't have any flint. All right, I'm going to come back to the sword a little bit later. So let's show you how to make tools with Tinker's Construct. Once we've crafted the parts in our part builder, we go over to our tool station, click on the tool we want to build, and put the parts together. Pickaxe head, binding, wooden tool rod. There we go, a stone pickaxe. Click on the shovel, build a shovel. Click on the axe, build an axe. There we go, three Tinker's Construct tools. Now, I mentioned earlier that these tools are repairable. So the basic operation of the tool station is you can put a tool in here and you can put the material of the you know, the main tool component, like stone in this case, it's a stone hatchet, so you put stone in there to repair it. And we can even take a tool station with us, we can build a second tool station, bring it with us, and we can repair it when we're down mining. That works really well for early game, especially when your tools are stone. You can also repair metal tools, but uh, we're not at the stage we're going to make any metal tools right now. Now, you're probably wondering, well, why didn't I go ahead and make a stone sword. Well, the reason is because Tinker's Construct tools also have certain tool traits. If we go look in the red book, the Materials in You Volume 2, we'll see that there are tools, materials, and modifiers. 
and there are material traits. So there is stone bound, which means the tool mines faster as it wears out, but does less damage. That's great for a pickaxe. If our pickaxe gets damaged, it mines even faster, but it does less damage. That's not good for a sword. If our sword's weak and we're about to break the sword, we definitely don't want it doing less damage. So we'd actually rather have jagged. The tool does more damage as it wears out, but mines slower. Well, for a sword, we don't care about mining speed. We care about attack. So we want it to be jagged. But we don't want to add a stonebound trait, which we get from stone. You see, a material trait is stonebound. We do want to add the jagged trait, which you can get from cactus. Let's see here. You know what? I think we can make a cactus sword. I wasn't thinking we might want to make it a cactus. Let's see here. The base attack is one heart versus stone, which is half a heart, so that's better. Bone is half a heart. What about flint? Did I skip flint? I did. So, yeah, actually cactus is the same as flint. I was going to make the sword out of flint, but you know what? We are in a desert, so there's plenty of cactus lying around. So, you know what? I will go ahead and make the sword. I'll just make it out of cactus. I wasn't going to, but now I will. So, we'll put this sword blade in here. Get me a cactus sword blade. And I need the wide guard. And the wide guard doesn't matter what we make this out of. I'm going to make it out of a stick because um, it costs it has a material cost of 0.5, which means it's half of a material cost. If I put a plank in here, I'll get the wide guard and one stick back, which I really should get three sticks back since a plank is really four sticks. But um, that's... No, you know what? I'm sorry. I always think of that as fourth hit because you need two planks to make a stick. But I guess one plank is two sticks. Okay, well, never mind. Anyway, I'm going to make it out of a stick. I won't have any leftover material. Wooden wide guard. And the wooden wide guard will have no effect on the durability of the tool or anything else. And speaking of durability, there's another reason I made the handles out of wood rather than out of stone. So if we go to the material traits, we see that wood has a handle modifier of 1.0, meaning the durability of the tool is not affected by using a wood handle. However, if we use stone, it's got a handle modifier of 0.5, meaning if you make a handle out of stone, you are halving the durability of your tool. We don't want that, so you don't want to make stone tool handles, you don't want to make stone swords. So we use wood for that, and cactus gives us our, our jagged trait for our sword. So let's go ahead and make our sword. We need the cactus sword, the wooden wide guard, the wooden tool rod. There we go, a cactus sword. So there we go, our four basic Tinker's Construct tools. If we carry cactus with us, we can repair our cactus sore whenever it gets damaged. If we carry stone with us, or we're going to go mine, so we'll have a lot of stone, we will be able to repair our stone tools. And when I say stone, I actually mean cobblestone here, because that's what you make stone tools out of in Tinker's Construct, not stone itself. I'm not really sure if smooth stone works. It probably does. I just haven't ever used that. Um, you know, early game, you don't really have a lot of smooth stone. You generally just have cobblestone. So there you are. I think that's a good wrapping up point for this episode. Um, there was tons of stuff in the village, and there was a Tinker's Construct smeltery. Uh, it's not completely usable, but um, it's here, so we can definitely add to that later on, and I definitely will end up doing that. I found a few things in the village that are useful, so be making use of that. There was some Railcraft stuff. Um, I don't really use Railcraft for much. I'm not a big Railcraft fan. There's a few things in there we'll use. Um, so we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the first episode. I am going to go do a bunch of mining, and then we will do some more stuff in the next episode. I'm not sure where we're going to go next. I would like to find some Certus Quartz and make a grindstone to do some early ore doubling. After I've got my source of food and my mining tools... 
that's generally the next place that I go is ore doubling because we're going to need a lot of ores to do the stuff I want to do. So that's my next trick. And if I can get some ores and get some metal tools, I will be able to, you know, find some gold, hopefully, and we'll get some glass and we will start Thomcraft because I want to get started on Thomcraft as soon as possible. Like I said, this is going to be a Thomcraft heavy series, not fully Thomcraft, but it is going to be my primary focus. All right. Catch you next time.